Hey there, trying to upgrade my main workstation and get a couple more network connections here. Currently there's a built-in network connection on the motherboard and I have a network card here, a little hard to see, but there is a card here with a single ethernet connection, a single RJ45. Uh, so what I did was I got another card. This is a dual ethernet card. An Intel dual Ethernet card so we've got two RJ45s here and the reason being I need to connect to multiple networks and I don't want to do that via a switch or something like that I want to have separate physical connections on this computer it already has the two but with this I'll be able to have four network connections which is exactly what I want okay the problem is we don't have any slots available now you might see there's a slot here. This is a by 16 slot. Unfortunately, I can't use that because I have an M.2 card here. That's a Samsung SSD drive. And that's connected to an M.2 slot. With this motherboard, if you use the M.2 slot, you lose the last by 16 slot on the motherboard. So if you use the M.2, you lose the by 16 over here. So, what do we have? We've got my main video card, which has four video connections out to monitors, and I use all those. And then I have a second video card that has an HDMI that I was using to replicate one of the monitors, and that would go out to a separate video system. So the only option really is to get rid of this guy, and I'm going to do that video in a different way, and use that by 16 slot for the new card. I can't use the slot that this network card is in, this here, because that's a by one. And the, the dual Ethernet is actually a by four card. So that's got to go into the uh, by 16 slot. So let's get cracking. I'm going to remove this video card and put in the new network card now. Okay, so there we have it. We've removed the video card, put in the new network card. So now I've got an embedded network connection on the motherboard. We've got a single network card, which I'm still going to use, and we've got a dual network card. So I'll have four network connections out to go to the various places that I need to go. Let's boot up the computer and, and make sure it's working properly. Okay, so we got the computer booted up, and of course there was five or six Windows 10 updates and restarts that had to be done, which knocked out my audio system, so I got to troubleshoot that. Uh, good fun. But the network cards were seen, so I apologize for the low audio quality this video. Uh, I'm on the headset right now, so we'll just have to make do with that. But you can see here that we have the network adapters in the device manager. And we've got the uh, two network adapters that were already there. And then we have the new one, the dual port card. Okay, now we can make modifications in the device manager, and we can do it within network connections in the GUI. But I've shown this plenty of times uh, on my website and elsewhere books and videos. So let's actually go into the PowerShell and make all the changes we have to do there. So I'm going to open up PowerShell now. All right, so we've got one PowerShell open as an administrator. And you know what, let's actually open two. And we'll run these two here. Here we go. We got two PowerShells open. And by the way, what we're in here is uh, PowerShell 5.1. You can find that real quick by doing a dollar sign PS version table. And I'm on 5.1. So some of the commands I might run might not work in the future. Keep that in mind, especially if you're in PowerShell core or upcoming versions of PowerShell. Anyways, let's take a look at what we have here. First thing I'm going to do is an IP config slash all to take a look at my network adapters. And let's see here. We get lots of information. 
You can hear loud engines going by me. That's pretty awesome, but not what we're doing here. Uh, the main network is my Intel Gigabit CT desktop adapter. And the main network I'm actually on with that is 192.168.41. Then down here we have the DPro42 adapter, which is 172.18, separate network. And then you can see the Ethernet adapter slot 06 by 16 port 1 and Ethernet adapter slot 06 by 16 port 2. That's collectively that's that dual port card that I installed so it sees it we're good but it gave both of those ports a PIPA addresses it automatically assigned I don't want that so we're gonna make changes there lots of information here let's try to keep it straight now like I said we can look at information in the device manager which is great but I want to do that in the PowerShell so let's do a get PNP device Okay, let's do a get PMP device command, and you'll see we're going to get lots of information here from USB devices to SCSI adapters, system devices, and network adapters, blah, blah, blah. That's a ton of information. That's a little hard to work with. So let's kind of modify our results by adding a parameter. We'll do a get dash PMP dev device space class or dash class and net and when we press enter we'll get just the devices that are in the net class the network class now you'll see virtual box you'll see VMware connections but what I'm interested in is my physical connections and we see here the gigabit CT desktop adapter we see a Realtek wireless that's actually not connected right now but it remembers that. We see Intel Ethernet connection. That's the uh, card that was already there. And then we see the dual port adapter and adapter number two. Okay, so I wanna do a couple things. I want to rename these adapters by the IP network that they're connecting to. Uh, so it's a little bit easier for me to know what I'm looking at. Also, I want to change some IP addresses, mainly on these two uh, ports on that dual network card. Let's do that. First thing we're gonna do is some renaming. And okay, let's clear this out. So first thing we'll do is some renaming. I wanna rename this main network to the IP network that I'm on, the main IP network that that is using is 192.168.41. Okay, so let's do that now. We'll do that with a rename uh, net adapter. And we need to know the current name. And that's going to be double quotes for this. Current name is main network. Then we want to know uh, what the new name will be. So that's just a dash new name quote. Uh, and I'm going to call this 192.168.41 dash main network. So we'll change the name a little bit here. Press enter. Okay, no GNU's is good GNU's. That should have worked. We'll check it with a quick IP config. And it did. It calls it now 192.168.41 main network. So kind of a long name. Maybe I'll change that in the future just to 192.168.41. But I've got so many network adapters that I want to be able to keep it straight. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, this is actually my main network where, you know, my storage is and everything. All the other stuff is testing networks. All right, so that's good. And I'm going to change the rest of the names now. And I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I've changed all those. I'm going to run an IP config slash all again to check it. And let's take a look here. Okay, we've got 192.168.41 main network. Down here we've got 172.18.0. 
Okay, down here we have 172.18.0. I called it secondary because I want two connections to that switch right now. Uh, later I'm going to change that. And then here we have 172.20.0, which is going to be connecting to a separate switch. And those are the dual port server adapter and the dual port server adapter number two. Oops. Okay. And so if we look at the history here of the commands, you can see I made all these changes. I made a mistake here. I said Ethernet adapter and the name, you don't need Ethernet adapter. I forgot about that. Just needs slot 06, the name it gave it. And once I did that, I could change the names. So now I have all my adapters here set up by name and now I want to make changes. I want to change 172.18.0. That's the first of that dual port. And I want to change 172.18.0 secondary. That's the second of the dual port. So now I want to make changes to this guy and to this guy. Because they're both using a PIPA addresses right now. I want to change both of those. So let's do that now. We'll do that again in the PowerShell. We'll use the network shell. And we could do this with a single command uh, to change the IP address. So net sh, and we're going to do interface and IP set address. And we need to know the connection name. So we'll start with this guy. That's going to be 172.18.0. Dash secondary. Okay, and then we need to know uh, what we want to do here. I want this to have a static address on the network. So it's going to be static, and then we need to know the IP. So 172.18.0, and this one is going to be uh, 253. And then we need to know the subnet mask, 255.255.0.0. That's what I'm using for that network. And then what the gateway is, 172.18.0.1. And that's the nice part of this. When you're working with this, you don't really have to type in mask. You don't have to type in gateway. Just start going static and put all the information in. That is, if you want it to be static, you can just set it to DHCP here if you want and type none of the information. But for my workstation, I need static addresses. All right, so that should be correct. We'll press enter and it looks good. Let's check it with another IP config slash all. And this is for uh, 172.18.0 secondary and we are good. 172.18.0.253. Let's see if that guy can ping the gateway. We're good. Well, actually, I have two on that. We should disable one and check it. But I think we're good now. He should be fine because he is connected. We would have messages if he, he wasn't. This guy is 253, replies directly. We should be good with that. OK, now let's check the other guy. And the other guy is this one. That's the Intel card adapter 2. Again, right now he's using 169, a PIPA. We don't want that. So we'll modify that guy. OK, and once again, net sh uh, the NetShell interface IP set address. But now we're going to change the name. And I just hit an up arrow to get the history there. But we're going to change the name here to 172.20.0. Nice. OK, but we need to change the IP address information. This guy's going to be on the 20 network. OK, good. And this guy's actually going to be 20. OK, this is an administrative network, a separate switch altogether that I'm placing this on. And the gateway for that is going to be 20.0.1. This switch isn't actually set up yet. And that's going to be next on the list. But this is what we want. We'll just double check. The name looks right. 
static address on 172.20.0.253, which is fine for now, and double 255 for the subnet mask, and gateway address 172.20.0.1, which again, it's not set up yet. Press enter, looks good. Let's do another IP config slash all. Doodly do. And uh, that one's good, and this one's good. Okay. Now, one thing you'll notice here is we don't have DNS servers. They're just set up to IP version 6. We need DNS as well. So, we're going to modify that also. This command's a little different. This is uh, netsh interface IP add instead of set and DNS. Then we need the connection which we've changed. I'll start with this guy up here. Okay, so 172.18.0 dash secondary. And we just need to know the IP address of the DNS server. 172.18.0.1 is the main one. Press enter. No news is good news. Let's check it. IP config slash all once again. And, uh, yep, here's our 172.18.0 secondary, and there is the DNS server. Same address as the default gateway. That's fine. That's what I'm using for that particular network. And so let's do the same thing for the other adapter interface. We'll just change the name. It's one, and now we'll work with that, 172.20.0. That's it. This is going to be, this is again also not set up yet, but it will be 20.0.1. And I'll probably have additional DNS servers as well. You can add those with the comma, but we'll just do that for now. Okay, and it's telling me it doesn't exist yet, which is true. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, and that proves that the other network adapter indeed works because it, f it didn't give a message. When we did this, it did not give an actual error message because it could see this DNS server and proved it did exist. Uh, but for this guy, it does not exist yet. Um, and that is true. I haven't set it up yet. But it did change it here, which is what I want. I just want to get the card done I'm going to set up the other side of that 172.20 administrative network in the future. Okay, and that's it. We are now done. We have, let's do one more IP config slash all. And we've got all our cards set up now. We've got the main network card. That's to my main business network. And now you know what the IP is I'm using there. Not a big deal. It's all protected. Uh, then we have the one of my test networks and that's the second card that's the uh, separate individual card and we're connected there that's been configured for a while I just changed the name then we have the new card and one of those is a secondary connection to that test network and we have him all configured with IP address subnet mask default gateway and DNS server and then finally, the second port on that new card, which is going to an administrative network. I have this guy configured, IP address, uh, default gateway, and DNS servers. That network's not configured yet, but it will be. So we're done with that. The names have been changed. The IP addresses have been changed in a static fashion. Um, and that's about it. We're done with this configuration. And now we can get to work with all the other fun stuff we have to do, like setting up that 172.20 network and also uh, fixing my audio now that Windows has just made a mess of it. Uh, one more thing, keep in mind, um, we did, and I'll put up a history here. Here's the history of the uh, commands I just typed. But keep in mind also that we are using... Uh, per PowerShell version 5.1 here. So newer versions, you might get issues. Keep that in mind. All right, and so that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching.